So in this unit, we're also going to explore water resources. We've kind of already talked about these when we talked about eutrophication when we're talking about farming. So farming has a really intimate relationship with water, not only using water for our crops, but also wastewater that comes uh, after a big rain event. So we'll explore that a little bit more, but kind of just talk about some other rules and regulations and things happening to our water resources. So why do we care? You know, why protect fresh water? And I emphasize fresh water because we as humans rely on fresh water the most. Salt water is fun to play in and stuff like that, but we don't really use it for anything. So one reason, and probably you think maybe the most important reason, is drinking water. We need to consume water. We cannot drink salt water without like dying. Uh, so fresh water is incredibly important for our drinking water. And clean drinking water. You also need to provide water for agriculture. So again, very intimate relationship. A lot of the fresh water we use around the world actually goes to agriculture. Uh, we use it more in agriculture than we do for drinking, for showering, for dishes, for everything. It actually, a lot of it goes to agriculture. And then finally, there are other organisms <laughs> that rely on that fresh water. These could be organisms that we benefit from, like salmon, like we see in this picture. Or it could be other organisms that we don't have a connection with, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that organism isn't important. Remember when we looked at keystone species, you know, one organism that may not seem important could actually have a whole cascading effect on the ecosystem. But despite, you know, fresh water having all these important sources, I mean, look around you. You know, here's all this trash, here's an algal bloom, we're throwing waste directly into our water bodies. The EPA, so the Environmental Protection Agency of the United States, says that about 40% of our freshwater ecosystems are not even safe enough to swim in. So nearly half of all of our water isn't safe. And this should worry you. If it's not safe to swim in, it's not safe to fish and eat the fish, it's not safe to drink, this is water that we have polluted so badly that we can't even use. So there's different types of pollution, and some of which we've kind of talked about in this class. So some things that we can be polluting is trash. And this is what a lot of people think of is, oh, you don't want to pollute things. You don't want to throw trash like into our rivers. And we've talked about that before when talking about our plastic waste. There's also chemicals. So think about a chemical company, you know, they create a lot of different types of pollution and not so much these days, but in the past, they would just release that pollution anywhere they wanted in the water, on the land, in the air, in a lot of places. Pathogens. So pathogens are things that can make you sick. Particularly when we're talking about water pollution, this comes to waste. So human waste, when you use the bathroom, that water goes somewhere. It does get cleaned up, but not all of it. Nutrients. It's weird thinking of a nutrient as a pollution, but remember nutrients cause these algal blooms. Algal blooms dying cause oxygen to be depleted and make huge effects on the ecosystem. Sediment. So dirt, you don't think of dirt as being, you know, a pollutant, but to organisms that are living in those ecosystems, that can be incredibly important. You know, having really, really murky water makes it harder to find food. And then finally, temperature. Temperature is kind of weird because it's not something you actually hold and feel, but an increased temperature in the water caused from power plants, caused from paved surfaces, can actually have big effects on the ecosystem as well. <clears throat> so where does this pollution come from? Well, it comes from a variety of sources, and it really just depends on what type of pollution we're talking about. But in general, we classify pollution into two major characteristics, either point source pollution, which is what this slide is showing, and on the next slide, we'll talk about non-point source pollution. <clears throat> point source pollution, there's a point. You can look at it. So here, here is a tunnel. Here is a pipe. There is pollution coming out of it, and I can tell you exactly where it came from. It came from these guys, or this came from these guys. You can point to who is releasing that type of pollution. So here they're releasing some sort of chemical. You can see it's not doing great. It's causing, I, I don't even know what it's causing, but it does not look good. 
This looks like they're releasing it into some sort of river, but we can point to see who it is. And this kind of pollution is actually heavily regulated. It's very easy to regulate these because we say, oh, you, company, you are le releasing this much, don't do that. Or you can, but you can only do it this much, not this much. So point source pollution versus non-point source is better, just in the sense that we can regulate it more. Our non-point source pollution isn't regulated, or not regulated very well, because it's hard to say who was the problem. For example, a parking lot. When it rains, you've probably seen this, you see this nice like rainbowy color, it looks pretty, but it's actually a bunch of oil and other really bad chemicals. It's going to go to a pipe somewhere in the grocery store, or in the grocery store parking lot. It's going to go into a river somewhere, and it's going to keep on going, and it's going to enter the water body. I can look at it and say, oh, there's oil in this river. Whose car did it come from? You have no idea. You, you, don't, you couldn't even tell me what store it came from, because all the stores have the same exact problem. So non-point source, you cannot point to the source. And because you can't point to the source, it's really hard to regulate it. Like, hey, Target, you need to do something about it. But what about Walmart? You know, what about the fast food restaurants? What about apartment complexes? It's really hard to regulate all of these businesses because it's not just one person's fault. Another example, this would be a field from a farmer. In the Gulf of Mexico, we have a dead zone every year. We know it's farmer's fault, but we don't know which farmer. We know someone somewhere in the Mississippi watershed is releasing a lot of fertilizer, but who? Well, we don't know. We can't just point to the farm and say, it is those guys. Now, some a trick, because it's really about can you point to the source, not is it coming from a point. So here's an example. When parking lots drain, in both of these, they drain into a single pipe, and that pipe eventually leads to a body of water. But even though this is a pipe, you're like, oh, point source pollution, it's coming out of one point. This is just a blending of water from a bunch of different areas. So don't think, oh, because there's a pipe, that must mean it's point source. You need to be able to see like the actual factory or location it's coming from. For here, this is probably some pipe like in the side of a ditch somewhere, draining a whole bunch of areas.